good evening dr subendu we welcome you uh, for uh, your talk uh, to just to introduce him that he is a senior vr consultant in dishai hospital calcutta he has been presented various papers in national and international conferences he has been awarded as best paper in various state conferences he has always he has always presented uh, uh, has been awarded as best video in u retina 2019 2009 and 2010 he has also been awarded with red peckler award in ascrs uh, 2017 he is a he has various publications to name to his list he is an excellent surgeon and i invite you sir for your talk thank you thank you very much so thank you for uh, giving me the time thank <laughs> no sir it's our our privilege <laughs> Can you see my slides? Yes. Yes. Yes, sir. We can so, see. My initial experience with this new drug, Brundusimab. So, uh, Dr. Manoj Khetri, I have gone through all these uh, uh, talks, like uh, almost eighty uh, percent of the talks, and uh, I have seen the uh, initial part and the la last part of the uh, presentation is case discussion also. Because uh, like uh, lots of uh, like discussions are going on with this new drug, bolusimab, that is Pagenax, and uh, I will share my experience with uh, this new drug. Like uh, um, uh, initially, uh, I uh, tried to uh, use this case in uh, recalcitrant or uh, like in recurrent cases, but uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, my first patient was a, a treatment naive patient. This patient actually presented in two thousand fifteen. With the right eye distorted vision, metamorphosis, and the vision was six by twelve parts. On examination, there was subobial hemorrhage, CNVM with query CNVM means because my clinical diagnosis left eye was absolutely normal. I advised him for the basic test like DFA and OCT, but it didn't turn up at the time. Again, he came after four years, he, five years. He came in September two thousand twenty, and at that time, the hemorrhage was uh, totally vanished and. Uh, This time he did only photo, fundus photography and OCT, and there was some like elevation PED and uh, luminous LED is uh, still there, and I advised him for the ranibizumab, but he uh, turned up at that time again. So in visit three October 2020, the vision gone down six by eighteen, and he then he came for active treatment. Then I have advised him for like you can it is your choice whether ranibizumab or fluorescent. And bolusimab, but it's a new drug. Has uh, come at us now, like maiden patient, patient for me. And at that time, he has uh, he took the bolusimab injection. Left eye was absolutely normal. There was no signs of uh, like uh, PCV or double layer signs. Also, not there. Patient was absolutely normal, six by six. And after five weeks of injection, uh, bolusimab six milligram. You can see the bolusimab blockiness has gone down. But still, PED is, was uh, it was persisting, and vision improved to six by nine parts from six by eighteen. After eleven weeks of uh, this injection, vision uh, was stabilized to six by nine, but PED was persisting, and the uh, illusion of blockage was totally resolved. So this was my first case in the patient. It was a treatment naive patient. Now coming to the case three, case two. It was a case of a patient presented in 2019 January uh, with 1 by 6 division submacular hemorrhage, uh, almost like not occult CNV, but kind of like fibrovascular uh, PD and lots of uh, CME you can see on OCT. And uh, then he took six injection of uh, ranibizumab and two aflibarsep in the left eye and vision from 6 by 1 by 62 it was stabilized to 6 by 24. And in uh, September uh, 2020, also the vision was uh, stabilized to 6 by 18 parts. But again, in October 2020, the vision gone down to 6 by 24 parts. So there was a recurrence of CME. So it was a case of a recurrent uh, CNVM, that is occult CNVM. And at that time, I advised him uh, for intravitreal Pagenex. And right eye was absolutely normal. There was no double layer sign. Was like uh, kind of PCV or AMD kind of picture. AMD is occult CNVM, but maybe it is PCV kind of picture. You can see, and in the uh, like, uh, just a minute. 
Yes. Now, in the left eye, after giving this injection, of two weeks after the giving the injection, the vision was stabilized to 6 by 18. The edema is totally vanished. The PED part is totally vanished. You can see the junction with, between the neurosensitive retina and the PED part it is almost uh, fuzzy. And uh, there are signs of uh, regression of like uh, of CNV. In the, after six weeks of uh, giving injection, vision was still stabilized to 6 by 18. You can see the hyperfect picture in the left eye and edema was totally vanished. And again, after 16 weeks of single dose of uh, Paganax, you can see the vision was still maintaining 6 by 18 parts and there was edema, intra-retinal cystic changes was totally uh, absent. And the really small changes were there, but the, the PED part was totally, it was uh, showing the almost CNVM was almost regressed. Now coming to the case three, that was the longest follow-up till now. Uh, I, I had done that uh, with this single dose of Paganax. It was a case of post vitrectomy, uh, vitrectomy done for the vitreous hemorrhage as well as submacular hemorrhage, there was an uh, subretinal TP injection along with the subretinal anivizumab. I have given in this patient, but uh, there was a very huge CNVM uh, scarred membrane you can see in the posterior pole. So, vision was uh, very poor, uh, 3 by 60. Uh, and uh, again, after some time, uh, patients were showing the cystoid changes in the neurosensitive edema uh, in the month of December 2020. And I have given this uh, Paganax injection. I choose this injection the drug because uh, of its uh, nature of that is it is rapid penetration of the drug and the smaller molecules, they can go very rapidly to the inside the retina. So in a vitrectomized eye, Maybe the uh, maybe it will act for a longer time. Although the in other with the other drugs, uh, although I don't have any final senators, with the other drugs also this uh, the clearance from the vitreous cavity in the case of vitreous side like maybe it is more. So I choose this drug because uh, of these following reasons. So after two weeks of injection, uh, vision improved to six by sixty. You can see the system changes was uh, absolutely uh, resolved and. Although the scarred membrane was still persisting and the, uh, that uh, lumpy lumpy uh, macula was still, the nature was still uh, uh, there, but you can see the white uh, subretinal uh, hematoma was also resolved. You can see in the infrared picture in the, uh, in the fundus photos of, of course. Now coming to the fourth uh, case, it was a case of bilateral CNBM after giving multiple injections of Random zoom out because the uh, bilateral stable CNV vision was maintaining 6 by 18 in both eyes and uh, right eye and the 6 by 9 parts in the left eye. But uh, again, in the month of December 2020, patient uh, showing some kind of recurrence in the right eye, it's subphobial uh, SRF, and uh, in the left eye, there was aggravation of ED as well as SRF. And after uh, three weeks of giving this full uh, of injection, vision improved to 6 by 12, and SRF was totally resolved in the right side. The left eye vision improved to 6 by 9, and you can see the PED has gone down significantly, or a small, like, like thumb like elevation uh, of PED was there, but uh, you can see the size of the PED has gone down significantly. So now coming to the case 4. It was a case of recurrent CNBM. You can see the multiple PED double layer shine and SRF was there in the left eye. And after giving this uh, Paganax injection, uh, it was a recurrent case, uh, recurrent of CNBM. And uh, vision improved to 6 by 12, although the PED was persisting in this case, but the subfovial fluid has gone down. You can see that's uh, on OCT angiography also, the, uh, there is hardly the membrane was visible in the last picture deep uh, layer and as well as a polycapillary uh, scan. Now coming to the sixth case, you can see that there's a case of after, after giving multiple injection of uh, antivagives, previous aflibercept and uh, radiolizumab, uh, the same uh, was stable, which was 6 by 6, 6 by 9 in the left eye. Uh, right eye, there was uh, double layer stain, although there was no frank SRF or interretinal cystoid changes were there. Vision was maintaining 6 by 9, but uh, uh, this stable CNM again recurred uh, after the, uh, in the month of January 21, recently, uh, two months back, and vision uh, gone down to 6 by 9, but situation was, uh, the PED part was not much into, uh, much much increased, but the SRF was 
still there you can see the larger dilated collateral vessels in the uh, edi oct and after giving to uh, this bolusivab two weeks of uh, giving uh, bolusivab injection which had improved to 6 by 9 only bd was slightly decreased but srm has gone down you can see the, the dilated collateral vessels are still uh, present but still uh, it is decreased in some uh, uh, some decrease in the diameter so uh, after six weeks of uh, this injection patient uh, you can see the left eye uh, although right eye was not changed uh, so untreated eye the treated eye uh, vision improved to 6 by 9 so now uh, the pd has also gone down even if you compare the pd part previously uh, just after giving single dose of uh, this bolusivab uh, you can see that gradually 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 the speed part is uh, decreasing this patient is uh, doing the good follow up and it's another case where you can see 64 years old male patient who is having uh, srf and pd uh, still where uh, 6 by 12 parts in the left eye after 6 weeks of giving this uh, pagenex injection the vision improved to 6 by 9 and uh, central uh, thickness has gone down from 228 to 199 and SRM is completely dissolved and see the PED part is also decreased uh, very much. So till now, we are, I have given 25 injections in the hospital, total number of births uh, were given 66. And uh, 15, first 15 patient I did uh, follow up, uh, but uh, other patient is still waiting, recently given. So uh, recently the number of injections uh, in, uh, for this uh, Pagenex, we have increased because of this, uh, in cases of records, records uh, CNG, I am not uh, prescribing uh, this drug in treatment patient, although it is not uh, like that, that it should not be given because my native patient was, it was a treatment nerve patient. Most of the indications are PCB, I restricted myself, uh, PCB or weight MD. Previous treatment was uh, actually done in all except for my first case. Uh, touch wood, no adverse reaction. Uh, because and, uh, uh, I, feel, I, 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 I faced in my uh, in 25 cases uh, till now, uh, except one case was complaining about the, some kind of burning sensation, although it is quite evident, it is usual after giving any anti vegf injection, but this patient was complaining of burning sensation, it, is, it was persisting for two weeks, uh, although the, it was the pain the binding sensor was coming from inside. That was this patient's own language. It's not, although it was gone down significantly, but uh, but it was uh, still there. And some kind of special consideration uh, should be made uh, with this uh, new drugs because it is a new drug. You should use it judiciously uh, because my my uh, advice should be only in recalcitrant cases because uh, a lot of uh, like. Uh, standard drugs are available in the market so if you use this new drug uh, at a first go so patient may ask why you have used it uh, if some kind of what say this kind of like uh, bad things are happening so you should be uh, answerable to the patient so uh, use judiciously uh, use the standard treatment uh, like other uh, ranibizumab or aflipercept or the time tested drugs because this drug is new, and then in some uh, some uh, studies also they have shown that a lot of like intraocular adverse reaction. Although the subgroup analysis of the Hopper Davis study also they have shown the intraocular uh, adverse uh, inflammation on the vascular case, all the choroidal ischemia, lipid ischemia. They have shown some uh, AGO also. Uh, they have published one case report of choroidal ischemia, although it was. Uh, going, I think it's continuously just dissolving with this uh, with the topical steroid. Uh, they are used on this topical steroid to treat the inflammation. After ten weeks, after eight weeks, the the, the inflammation has uh, like appeared, and after ten weeks of giving this injection, uh, there's this coronary ischemia part and the other vitreous uh, ischemic part has vanished. So these kind of things uh, we have already we have gone through. So avoid in one eye patient if uh, the in the if the seeing eye the vision is very less so you can use it but use it uh, again judiciously and proper consent uh, in brief you should uh, you should you should uh, uh, highlight highlight your patient uh, not telling everything what is what is 
my because i have seen uh, if you are telling everything because uh, like uh, you can feel the sudden loss of vision so patient will not turn up for your injection so you can see you can show this much of injection we have given till now doctor in the last uh, meeting also with uh, dr rajanarayan he was telling till now in india we have used 1000 injection uh, only one patient he has based one uh, one Uh, he has not given, but uh, it is the cumulative data of uh, hundred thousand injection in all India. But uh, in one case uh, there was hypopian and it was like improving, but uh, other uh, cases there was no adverse reaction. So if you, uh, there is like people are saying, but uh, but still you can tell the the adverse reaction vasculitis brief to the patient and it is longer acting. Obviously, it is longer acting. and one more thing i should highlight that is the frequent follow up is required because it's a new drug i am just uh, asking the patient to do the follow up after two weeks and uh, what telephone i am just taking uh, like uh, that, uh, taking care with uh, like what is their visual status and what is their redness what are after one every weekly so these things should be made under special consideration thank you Uh, thank you sir thank you very much uh, good evening uh, we have uh, dr kapil vora vice president of ambala ophthalmic society with us he has joined uh, dr shubendu i would just like to ask what proper consent do we really have any consent till i mean form for this uh, drug till now like in our usual consent for the ranibizumab aflipercept we have already uh, There is the sudden loss of sudden onset of vision or intraocular inflammation part. That part has been mentioned. So we okay. are using the same consent form for this bulbosumab patient also. If okay. are, this statement, if you are not, uh, if in your consent form, if you are not included it previously, so include it because loss of sudden loss of vision and intraocular inflammation, these two things should be uh, like it should be. These things should be added in our consent form. We have already added. Uh, these statements. Okay. Okay. Yes, Doctor Mohit. Uh, uh, we have questions. Uh, yeah, I was just looking for these questions. Uh, we can request no artists people if they have any question on the webinar link. Uh, till then, sir, I think so. It was a very nice. You have shown so many cases, PCV, CMBM, so many, and it was doing very well. I think so. There is no doubt that its efficacy is really good. i think the main problem was a adverse event concern uh, which i think in our population is little less or maybe we are little bit maybe, more uh, maybe yeah maybe but what was, was my gut feelings case. this drug is actually very good uh, like it could be very very effective against the p uh, ped part the ped yeah, part yeah. it has other drugs because uh, previously we are not concerned about the ped part but uh, this drug is work uh, magically with the ped part Like yeah, I have shown few cases with over the time period of a few weeks, two weeks, four weeks, six weeks. You can see the PED has gone, it's gone down significantly. Right. Like it's quite nicely. It was, like, although it was my initial experience, but still it has some potential. What is new? My time. concern was that like you know this adverse event thing, though it is very less in our population, but we need to keep them under regular follow up. Yes, like, regular. The and advantage frequent. of this, yeah, very frequent means every two weeks. You mean to say frequently, or how? How do you are actually doing after one month? You have kept patient under follow up for then every two week only. You keep after one month also, or how do you do that? Two two weeks, four weeks, six weeks, then three months. Okay, and I think so. Till then, also we have to tell the patient also very nicely. If you have any symptoms, they have to call us. Yes, because, yes, know, yes. The adverse events can occur very late. Also, that is a problem that. It's not that you look at only within eight to ten weeks. Huh? Yes, yeah. that eight to four months. That part does also. Yeah, so it is uh, a very good molecule in PCV also. And today, yes. just uh, no artist people told that they got this uh, approval for uh, PCV also now. So I think so in the PCV it is a very good molecule. Even yes. your cases also we could see that. In some uh, like uh, part of the our country that people are using in off-label use in uh, BRVO or DME also, but uh, we have not we have restricted ourselves to only PCB and CNB, not to create any further controversy. Sir, do you prefer? 
uh, what uh, do you prefer uh, giving three loading doses as monthly interval and then extending the treatment or how are you doing in your cases like in our uh, case series like uh, i have it is all with the single drug single drug that was i have not injected monthly dose because okay. with the only single drug the patient is responding and the response is initially it was uh, like and the sustaining for last four months i have highlighted one case case two i think mm. uh, yes, the patient yes. was doing yeah. very well with only single dose of rodocirib so you can highlight your, whatever maybe the study like they are saying uh, in the hawk area also you can build up your own experience like you can consult over from your own experience like patient are doing very well with the single dose and even with this uh, only one dose they are maintaining good vision stabilized for 3 to 4 months that is you can highlight in the this manner also you can reduce the frequency of the drug injection that is the that is the main you can you have to increase the gap between the injection so sometimes the patients are doing like they are actually fed up with this injection lots of 16 20 30 injections so this kind of patient uh, you can just highlight you can reduce the number of injection maybe it will be uh, okay for your next three months or four months so not like that every monthly you have to give the injection although in the study of an india study they have mentioned the monthly dose so that uh, the injections so that you can maintain the vision up to the 96 weeks but practically it is happening with the single dose it's a very good drug for a lot of potential i think so with this like new drug okay dr manoj are you there yes sir i am there okay i just wanted to ask what is your uh, take on this uh, whether giving monthly injections and then going for uh, or treat and extend so oh, definitely even with polycizumab uh, we are doing loading those around now that is monthly injections for 3 to 3 months and then only going on uh, because we so one is the data which is suggesting to do the same the second thing we ourselves has to learn from some you know at least for 6 to months to years time like how it is working Mm-hmm. and my practice was never prn i always used to do monthly loading and uh, followed by prn the same thing i'm following as of now okay so uh, do you have any exclusion criteria or any specific criteria yeah the- so uh, i am not too concerned about one eye patient but i am concerned about any patient who had a old vein occlusion in the past in either of the eyes that is one of the relative contraindication what most of the people are from clinical experience are telling and if you talk to a lot of colleagues from us they are so you're doing only as a switch over therapy as of now on bolisizumab uh, mostly for recalcitrant cases there are very few patients rather less than 20% of their patients are on treatment many patients who have got bolisizumab uh, due to various issues there but here uh, i think we have also started for treatment nay um, wise uh, so seeing every patient as i said in my talk uh, individually and uh, um the uh, uh, excluding any vein occlusion and any definitely uveitis is there uh, 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 no prolisizumab any kind of uveitis in the past but also looking for vein occlusions uh, they are saying like uh, uh, as vasculitis is one of the major feature and we you know vasculitis is one of the major etiological factor for vein occlusion so to exclude mm-hmm. those patients mm-hmm. like that sir, have you any have you any I want to add one yes please subendu so please please add uh uh-huh. basically uh, i want to add one more uh, contraindication recently operated patient that is the signs of inflammation may be more so you can uh, okay. because dr rajanaran also showing one case the 6 weeks back the cataract surgery has been done and he has given the bolusizumab injection and patient presented with the hyperpion so there may be aggression aggravation of the uveitis so like uh, maybe it is it was not an early infected case because uh the patient was improved with the intra like topical drugs only without so it was not infected so uh, so have you encountered any case with vitreous cells or like that any vitreous inflammation no 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 as of uh, touch wood as of touch wood so how do you counsel your patient like doctor subendru bhai rightly said that you cannot tell everything because otherwise patient will run away 
it's very difficult like how to yes, tell this you have to that, brief no? you have to brief the whole thing in a very not cell like you cannot fact that fact i have to like two patients of mine who have also read on net and they came to us and they are that molecule bite to inject that for us so that kind of literacy is also there so yes yes absolutely <laughs> so we need to be medically also very strong because yes. in consent it should be very clearly mentioned i think so and Medi we should document that there is no mass spreading i don't think there is a much medically legally there is not a much of advice like we are hearing lot many reports that our colleagues are giving for various indications let's stick to only neovascular amd as of now so if you are sticking to that i think medically legally it should not be a problem and now it's been approved for ipcv also uh, pigeon x uh, that brolizumab has got ipcv approval also so that's not a problem it should not be a issue uh, there is a question from dr sumit khanduja that uh, have you tried this molecule in any other pathology other than armd dr shubhendu uh, i think no. you no 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 no, no. i will not advise also let's wait you know not only for medical data, but we are not sure let's wait for the dme data i think by this year and we are going to have data trials uh, data from the dme trials it's already going on and um, the preliminary results uh, let's wait for that data and then only we should take a call how to inject for other various indications so right now we should restrict ourselves to wet armd uh, preferably yeah, resistant yes, so pcv Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, a few of our colleagues have indicated injected even for BRBO and other indications, but I will say let's not do that. Let's not do that. It's not correct. Currently, PCP and neovascular AMD are only the approved in India indication. Indication. Yeah, let's stick to approved indication. Yeah. Sir, just uh, one question in my mind that in PCP patient, I have a patient who has a PCP with large submacular hemorrhage. Do you think this molecule will work? Uh, in uh, reducing the hemorrhage also uh, do you have you such experience uh, in submacular hemorrhage if it is very large more than yeah, 46 diameter large. yes yeah. uh, i am recommending surgery that is subrectal tpa with anti vhf and ar and or uh, if it is very large then go for the temporal relaxing technectomy and removal of subrectal neovascular membrane as well as blood and if it is very old uh, like more than 8 weeks and never is it that's why if possible that the rp correct graft transplantation this the this is like here submacular remedy if it is less than 40 cm small you can try with anti vhf or if it is traumatic in origin you can go for the like intravitreal secretory yes otherwise brolizumab i never tried for the submacular remedy. Doctor Mohit, any question? Yeah, I'm just saying. I think so. We. I don't think there's any question right now. I think so. The speakers have really uh, raised. I think so almost. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was everything actually. The okay. cases also we saw almost all the variety, and there were hardly yeah. any case of inflammation. I think so. There's no doubt about the efficacy part, and Doctor Subedru case is such a long follow-up. Also, the patient are maintaining their vision also, and even the there is no edema also. I think so. It is working very well. so i think so milwana yeah we can i think so sir uh, i think so we can uh, wind up i think so there are no more questions from the audience hmm. so sir uh, from outside from the mala of thank you society i would extend my sincere thanks to all the speakers who have really spared their time and uh, really increase our knowledge also about this newer molecule and given us more confidence that we also will Okay, uh, start injecting this uh, injections at this our setup, and thank you. Know what is also that they have been such a nice CME, and hopefully we will have a good interaction physically also when we meet. Uh, thank you yes, everybody sir. for joining. Let's uh, let's thank have you. a few words from Kapil sir also. Kapil sir is there? Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. How are you, sir? Kapil sir. Sir, unmute Hello, sir. yourself. Unmute yourself, sir. Unmute. Hello, unmute Kapil sir. Your... Hi, sir. Unmute yourself. <laughs> sir, go. Sir, unmute. Yeah. Sir, unmute. कीजिए. Unmute. Okay. Uh, good evening. Greetings, and my regards to all the stalwarts. Manoj boss, seeing you after such a long time. 
Shubhendu, good evening. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. And uh, it was heartening to listen to you. Uh, I'm sorry I joined late because got uh, uh, free very late. In the, uh, I was very late in the OT today. And uh, it was heartening to listen to you. You all, our savior, you all posterior segment masters are our saviors, basically. So, you uh, very often take us out of trouble. Thanks a lot. And uh, all the best for the future meetings.